Hello friends and welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Rays of Hope, coming from the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church in Adel, Georgia. Friend, let me invite you to pick up your Bible and turn with me over to the book of 2 Peter. Today we'll be in 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll look at verse 4 as our text and then we'll also tie uh, chapter 3 verse 9 in. And we'll continue our series of devotional messages that we've titled The Precious Promises of God. Get that good fresh cup of hot coffee. Let's sit together and uh, have an encounter with God and His precious Word on this beautiful day. My goodness, there's just not a better way to start a brand new day and a good fresh cup of hot coffee, and getting a ray of hope from the light of God's precious word. A friend over in uh, 2 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 4, the Bible says here, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then over in uh, chapter number three, verse number nine, the Bible says here, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I pray that God would add his blessings to the reading of his precious word. You know, we've already learned that uh, certain Bible scholars says there's over 8,000 promises in the word of God. Some of those promises are yet to be fulfilled, but many of those promises, they've already been fulfilled. We learned, first of all, that uh, we've got to consider the promise of salvation. And of course, today is the day uh, supposedly that Jesus would have died on the old rugged cross uh, to make that possible, the way of salvation. And then we learned yesterday that uh, we need to consider the promise of the Holy Spirit to those who are saved by the grace of God. God promises that he'll send the Holy Spirit, and friend, he did. And if you're saved by the grace of God, then the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in your heart and in your life. Today, I want us to continue our thought by considering the promise of, of eternal life. One of the greatest gifts that is given to those who love the Lord Jesus Christ is the promise of eternal life. Little fella says that's life that just don't quit. It just keeps right on going. Now, over in the book of John, 1 John, that is, chapter 5, verses 9 through 13, the Bible says here, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. So greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not uh, God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. And this is the record that God has given us or given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. You know, a lot of people are looking to die. Praise God, I'm looking to live. Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 26, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. One day you'll read an obituary and it'll say that I'm dead. Don't believe a word of it because I'll be more alive that day than I am right now. This old physical body may be laid to rest, but friend, I'm going to have a new body that'll never suffer, sorrow, nor know any pain whatsoever. It goes on to say, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, listen, praise God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Friend, you can know. 
I tell people all the time, this is a no-so way. You can know that you have eternal life, and that eternal life is granted to you by the salvation that's given in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. This teaching was ever before the early Christians. They preached this more than anything else. In John 10, 10, uh, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal. The devil is a thief, and he'll steal. It goes on to say he's come to kill and to destroy. But then Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And in John 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Praise God. Friend, that's just the eternal uh, salvation that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ to guarantee you eternal and everlasting life. And Jesus goes on to say, I and my Father are one. The Word of God teaches that we are kept by the power of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, the Bible says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they'll not follow, but they'll flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Friends, I want, to, want you to know today that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have the assurance of eternal life, and it's based solely on the precious and holy Word of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy, thy sake we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. And he makes it very clear. He says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And listen to this. Praise God, I love this. Verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friend, if you're saved by the grace of God, I want you to know that eternal life has already begun for you. Yes, one day if Jesus tears his coming, this old body that you live in, it may go back to dust uh, from where whence it came. But you need to understand that, friend, while you lay this body down, there is a new body, a body that will never suffer sorrow nor know any pain. Friend, it is going to be a wonderful life if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's promised. He said he'll do it, and I believe it with all of my heart. One day soon, friend, we'll inherit that promise of everlasting life when we leave this old world to go and be with him in his heaven. What a day that's going to be. Well, friend, I pray this has blessed you today. And uh, listen, share it with somebody that you can live forever. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this beautiful devotion that reminds us of what we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the precious promise of everlasting life. Now, God, I pray for the one who may not have that right now, that you'll reach into their life and assure them that if they'll get to know the Lord Jesus, that this could be the day that they make him their eternal God forevermore. And they'll be able to live forevermore in your heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, I pray you found encouragement in this today and that you'll use it. Also pray that you'll uh, get out into your world, make a difference in it. Uh, some people still not wanting to get out much. Well, pick up your phone, call somebody, encourage them in the Lord, and uh, just let them know that, hey, you can live forever. Jesus said, he that lives and believes in me never dies. Your life could be the only Bible that will point them to that Savior that can give everlasting life. Live it in such a way that it'll do just that. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.